Ghana and in many other developing countries, infrastructure is categorized to include mainly transport systems and facilities, energy production, transmission and distribution, water and drainage, sanitation, communication, and housing and irrigation facilities. Around the world, investment in infrastructure has always played a leading role in economic development from the roads and aqueducts of ancient Rome to the railway boom in Britain in the mid-19th century. Basic infrastructure such as roads, railways, airports, facilities for energy, water supply and sanitation underpins sustain, sustainable development and economic transformation of all emerging economics. The relationship between infrastructure development and economic growth has manifested itself in even in modern times in the U.S., in Europe, in South Korea, and China. In the U.S., after the Great Depression in the 1930s, used development of infrastructure, railroads, water transport, energy, and settlement development to open up economic opportunities, propelled industrial development, and launched a new level of prosperity in the United States. South Korea launched its Seymour on Down strategy in the 1970s, which focused on the provision of rural infrastructure, roads, irrigation, energy, water, to develop the intrinsic potentials of the neglected rural areas. These fringe segments by the 1990s have sprouted to become the growth and industrial nucleus of South Korea. The growth of Europe, as we all know, after World War II, hinged on the Marshall Plan, which funded infrastructure development to rebuild Western Europe. The rail and water transport connectivity, the development of cheaper energy sources, of course, with development of right human capacity, ignited the industrial areas of most of the areas. The economic miracle of China in the last decade is predicated on a huge development of infrastructure that linked up and opened the interior regions to the coastal frontiers and indeed to the international markets with the development of ports, massive rail and rural arteries facilitating industrial and agricultural production. Infrastructure development, ladies and gentlemen, is at the core of economic growth. In Ghana, the Gold Coast, as far back as 1903, initiated its first rail construction from Takwa to Sekundi, and by 1925 linked up the western with the central part of the country and also from the east to the west, principally to facilitate the export of cocoa and minerals. The 10-year plan of Gagisbeck from 1920 to 1930 added roads, ports, water, health and education infrastructure. The tempo for infrastructure development was raised in the 1950s and 1960s, adding on a veritable source of energy, road extension to the central and northern parts of the country, the development of ports, urban housing, as well as massive education and health infrastructure. There was the introduction of a conscious industrialization effort based on import substitution to utilize the infrastructure to propel economic growth. But by the late 1960s, it was clear that the expected industrial breakthrough was not realized and a worst-case scenario had been created with the failing urban industrial enclaves and very disadvantaged rural areas devoid of basic infrastructure. A rural infrastructure development program was thus launched, focusing on the development of rural transport, water and settlement development to serve as the basis of cottage industrial development. Ladies and gentlemen, the trend of the infrastructure development changed again in the early 1970s with much emphasis placed on agricultural infrastructure leading to the development of several large irrigation schemes and an attempt to revive some of the underperforming industries. While it is acknowledged that there was some tinkering with infrastructure development in the 1980s and 1990s, it registered a general rundown of the infrastructure base of the country. The railway system collapsed. Many of the artery roads deteriorated. Post infrastructure became outmoded and inefficient. Energy shortages became obvious and worsened with time. 
generally, while the immediate post-colonial infrastructure waned, new ones were scarcely built. After the year 2000, when the country declared itself as a highly indebted poor country, some amount of the gains and other grants were directed to support the rehabilitation of the major road arteries at the coastal stretch and also through Kum to Kumasi through to northern Ghana. Several feeder roads were rehabilitated, energy infrastructure expanded, and water projects, particularly in the rural areas, expanded. There was clearly a debt in infrastructure development and maintenance which led the country into a massive and prolonged energy crisis and the deterioration of transport infrastructure, particularly in the rural areas. In 2015 and 2016, following the oil windfalls of 2014, many hurriedly prepared infrastructure projects were executed in the areas of energy, transport, health, and education, principally to create visibility for an impending election. the current state of infrastructure in Ghana. It is an uncontested fact that Ghana at independence had a similar level of development including infrastructure outlay like South Korea, Malaysia, and Singapore. But while these countries improved their circumstances and built on their infrastructure and became best practices in the world, Ghana stagnated and even deteriorated in its infrastructure development. While it is acknowledged that the energy infrastructure has improved with an installed capacity of about 4,132 megawatts as of 2016, there is, however, an annual demand growth of about 10% to reckon with, and a debt overhang in the sector totaling almost about $2.4 billion. Ghana has a total road network of about 72,381 kilometers, with only 39% classified as good and 77% unpaved as at 2015. Water transport is highly un underdeveloped, though it represents the best potential for haulage of goods from the coast to the northern part of the country and to other neighbors in the sub-region. The railway system covers a distance of 947 kilometers, but only 13% is currently in good shape. Ghana is touted to be the aviation hub of West Africa, but carries only 12% of the aviation market in West Africa, while Nigeria takes a lion's share of about 54%. It is acknowledged that the port facilities are being improved and currently under serious rehabilitation, but there is congestion and an unbearable turnaround time. The settlements, including the national capital, have been relatively prone to floods, questioning the drainage infrastructure, while housing deficit is calculated to be about 1.7 million houses in 2016 by the UN Habitat and uh, continues to count further. Although information and communication technology usage has increased in Ghana, it is still short of total connectivity as internet penetration is rated to be 70% as at 20, uh, 2015, though mobile telephony coverage is quite high. Ladies and gentlemen, this is but a small picture of the deplorable state of Ghana's infrastructure, posing a serious threat to the growth and development of the country. The question is, how does the current government intend to brave the storm, to deal with these seemingly intractable development impediments. The current government recognizes that it requires doing things differently to change the course of infrastructure development in Ghana, and it is guided by four main principles. Number one. Pursuing integrated infrastructure development where these capital developments are well planned to complement each other and facilitate a high level of utilization in support of industrial, agricultural, and the service sector development. Two, planning of an investment in any infrastructure must go through a thorough financial and economic analysis to assess the financial viability and technical feasibility and have a budget 
that covers not only the development of construction, but also the operation and maintenance for the total lifespan and where feasible aim at cost recovery. Three, consciously engaging the private sector as partners in the planning, development, and management of infrastructure, and where possible, the private sector taking the lead with the government putting in place the necessary statutory regime and incentives to facilitate the process. And finally, curbing the massive corruption in the infrastructure development sector and to ensure that Ghana receives value for money on all its infrastructure projects. <laughs>